This is level P, list two, and we're doing the day one page. And here we're adding shun to the end of these um, roots. So we've got, if you get your highlight ready, let's mark them as we go. We've got action, faction, fraction, mention, fiction, nation, station, motion, potion, portion. So we only use SH at the start or end of words. When we want to sound in the middle of a word, we frequently use TI. So you've got other um, suffixes that might end with TI, like R O U S, etc. So here we're just using the shun. So when you hear shun at the end of a word, you know to write T I O N. When you hear jun, you're going to learn to write S-I-O-N. So that's the easiest way that we can explain it to you. There'll, there'll come some other um, rules along with that later, but at this point in time, that's the easiest way. So um, if we break these words into syllables as well, it'll make it a lot easier to spell them. So we're going to split so that we're cutting it before the shun. So we've got frac, shun, ment, shun, etc. So that's where we're going to split them when we're sounding them. Now what do all of these words mean? We've got action is um, the movement or the steps we're taking to do something. A faction means the team that you're on. A fraction can mean a part of something. Um, so one part in four. Um, mention is when you're talking about something. Fiction is an imaginative story. Nation is another word for a country. A station is a place we stop at. It would be a petrol station, train station. Um, motion is a movement. A potion is a brew that we might make up. And a portion is a piece of. Now let's go back and read sound, spell, cover, write and check those words. So we've got action, action, action. A C T I O N A C T I O N A C T I O N and then write it three times in your best running writing, then go back, cross your T, dot your I. Now when you get down to these ones, don't forget these R controlled vowels, O R, are making a long vowel sound. You can finish the rest of those. This is level P, list two, and we're doing the day two page. And here we're looking at the shun, um, spelled T-I-O-N, on the end of all of these words. So let's read them, and you can highlight the T-I-O-N, making the shun sound. Action, faction, fraction, mention, fiction, no nation, station, motion, potion, portion. Now let's go back, and because down here we need to identify if it's a, clo if it's a um, closed first syllable, if it's an R controlled vowel, or if it's an open first syllable. So we've got two colours I'm using, blue for the closed first syllable. So we've got um, a short vowel at, so we have to close the syllable with consonant. Faction, same thing, we've got a short at sound, so we have to close it with a consonant. Um, fraction, short vowel sound, so we're closing that syllable with a consonant. Same here, short vowel, closing it with a consonant, short vowel, closing it with a consonant. Now in the second line, we have the open syllables or R controlled vowels. So the R controlled vowel would be OR there. These ones, nation, A is a long vowel sound, so we cut the syllable after the A, we're leaving it open, station, motion, potion, they're all long vowel sounds, so we leave them open, we're not closing them with a consonant. So that might help you when you get down to this section. Now, replace the word in the sentences here um, with the correct list word, you can read through those and work them out. Down here you have to write six ingredients for the witch's potion and use two adjectives for every noun. We've given you the first one, one slimy snail. So think about what the, the ingredients could be and then two words to describe those ingredients for each of those five words that you have to write in.
this is level P, list two, and we're doing the day three list. And this is where we're using T-I-O-N for the shun sound at the end of these words. So action, faction, fraction, mention, fiction, nation, station, motion, potion, and portion. So if we go through, we can see that um, the T-I-O-N, just highlight that, is in each of these words. Then down here it says circle the incorrect verb and write it in its correct tense. We can circle it or highlight it. My brother was not very fair when he portion, he is portions out the ice cream for everyone. So it's hard to read incorrectly, but it makes it very obvious which, which verb or the verb that is in the wrong tense. So you have to decide what the ending should be on that verb so that it does, it is um, in its correct tense for that sentence. And you can write it um, on that line. Now down here you've got plurals. So with the plurals, when you're adding of an S to all these words, you're forming the plural. There's no tricks in there for you. Um, the gymnast something was very smooth. You can work out which word best suits that space. Down the bottom, you have to write the correct word. Now these are both adverbs. They're describing the verb. So we've got fractionally and factionally. The debate is something driven, so it's a tough competition to win. Um, you have to work out which word goes in each space. Don't forget to go back now, and we're going to read the word, sound the word, and spell them. So we've got action, so we can break them into their syllables again. Action, A-C-T-I-O-N, A-C-T-I-O-N, cover it, write it. If you're using running writing, don't forget to go back and cross your T and dot your I. Today we're looking at compound sentences and complex sentences, and we're looking at the use of the comma within a compound sentence. So in a compound sentence, you have an independent clause, then a coordinating conjunction, and then another independent clause. So the coordinating conjunctions you can use in here are for and nor but, or, yet, so. So if you take the first letter of each of those words, it becomes the word fanboy. So that might help you remember those coordinating conjunctions. So in the sentences below, you have to underline each of the independent clauses and highlight the coordinating conjunctions. So you can see we've got independent clause, independent clause, we've got the coordinating conjunction and you can see after the first independent clause and before the coordinating conjunction we've put a comma in and I've highlighted those for you in each of those sentences. So down here you have to write your your own three compound sentences so don't forget to put the comma after the first independent clause, use a coordinating conjunction before you write your second independent clause. It has to be related of course to the first part of the sentence. Now in complex sentences, your these contain an independent clause and a dependent clause. So if the dependent clause appears first, then there needs to be a comma before the independent clause. Sometimes you might have the independent clause first and then the dependent clause, but today we're working on putting the dependent clause first. So after the dependent clause, insert a comma and then write an independent clause to follow. So you can do those three. Um, then down here it says use the given word as the start of a dependent clause, insert a comma, and then write an independent clause to finish the sentence. 